stay pure clarity. Oh, hell yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, just take it out. Huh? Alright. This is cool. It's a secret room too. No! What was that noise? Okay, I'll just leave it there. I just need to get some brushes. Oh, this is gonna be good. the killer too. I need a stick.
Here's the chickens. That's the most cave right there. Alright, I've killed 32 fences. Let's see what I get from this. TNT. Another TNT. Oh, there's one. Actually generated brush and stairs. Told Betty it must just be a commercial airliner. But then when he kept looking more, he changed his mind when he saw the You just go over the mountains over here and you're in high desert. Uh, you get past Ellensburg and it's, and it's high desert. So I spent a lot of time out there getting, getting uh, reference. Uh, most of the reference came from Eastern Washington. I did a drive out to the Columbia Gorge and took a lot of photos and also a lot of just reference imagery of just like, hey, this is what desert looks like and, and big cliffs and stuff like that. That drive was two days. It was eight hours down, eight hours back, and, I, and I'm not even sure I spent the night. I did, I must have done, spent the night down there. So while it was definitely made for the Southwest, the local reference was um, out in the Columbia Gorge. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. My name is Mike Harrington. I was uh, co-founder at Valve. I wasn't really used to big companies. When I started at Microsoft, it wasn't that big. It was like 1,500 people, like a big high school. You know, nine years later, it was significantly bigger. I'm thinking, oh, this place is too big. And you know, that was still like 1996. So they had a long ways to go. You know, I told my managers like a year before, like I'm leaving. I'm leaving in a year, and I'm going to start a game company. And the first person I talked to was. Um, good friend of mine, Michael Abrash. But at that time, he was trying to do something within Microsoft, and by the time you know, it made sense, um, John Carmack had convinced him to go work at id. So how could he say no to that? 
And then I was having lunch with Gabe and I said, Gabe, you know, I'm leaving. I'm just gonna leave and I'm gonna start a game company. He goes, I wanna leave, I wanna start a game company. I go, all right, and that was it. You know, on the surface, we should have failed. Like, and, and realistically, both Mike and I thought we would get about a year into it, realize we'd made horrible mistakes and, and go back to our friends at Microsoft and ask for our jobs back. Uh, but we did think that we knew a fair bit about software development, that there were expertise that goes into it. I think we also had some pretty clear ideas of how to design a company, right? So when we were building Half-Life, we were also designing Valve at the same time. We had no plan except for, by then, I, like I mentioned, um, Michael had gone to it. And he said, oh, you're, you're, you're starting a game company. You have to use our engine. So Gabe and I flew down to Mesquite to meet it. We spent a good deal of time with you know, John Romero, and he told us, like, this is what you need to do to start a game company. You need to go out and hire some level designers and you know, do that kind of thing. And we kind of understood the engineering part. And then, you know, because we were Michael's friends, you know, we walked away with the source code to Quake that day. We had no contract yet. We had kind of an idea of what it could be. And they just gave us a CD and we had kind of the crown jewels of it. And, and that, you know, game on. <laughs> I think most of us had no game development experience. We were either amateurs working in our homes at night for fun, or we, some people were from the software world, but they had never worked on a game. I think we had three or four people in the entire company who had actually shipped a game when we started Half-Life. We have to figure out what is Valve's first game. So we have to come up with an IP. So everything is done from scratch. Gabe came into the office and he said, I read this story. I read this Stephen King story called The Mist. You know, Stephen King, it's got monsters, you know, people in a grocery store, fog comes in, monsters in the fog, you know, use your imagination. We didn't want to write that as a game. That wasn't really the point, but it was just the tension and, you know, how, how it felt. Well, it was interesting at first we had two games. Greg was working, oh, Prospero, yeah. okay. and then Half-Life was originally called Quiver. My job was then build a team and figure out another game for us to build that'll be the second game Valve ships. What features should it have? How is it going to be different from a normal first-person shooter? Every time the engine got a feature for Prospero, Half-Life stole it. And then Half-Life just started getting visually, you know, more impressive and cooler. And eventually it just, yeah, because it was going to ship sooner, it 